Welcome to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make dance sport, country, and skate dresses of your dreams. I am delighted to be wearing one of my Sew Like a Pro members dresses. I am in on location in Arizona, and I had a great day today with three of my sewing school members who live here in the state of Arizona. I am wearing a dress by Tammy. She also made the two dresses in the background, all of which are for sale. If you're interested, go ahead and contact me. Now, this, is, this has been a really great day. Tammy enrolled in the school in 2016 when it first opened for enrollment, and she had made several dresses prior to and then has just kept on sewing. She usually makes two, three, four dresses a year, both for her daughters, and now she started being commissioned to do custom work for other people at her ballroom studio. Now, the really awesome thing is that Tammy brought six or eight dresses with her today, and so we have all had a great time looking at the progress of how much her work has improved. This is one of her earlier dresses versus some of the more complex dresses, such as both of these. And her design elements and the construction in that improved significantly and got so much more complicated along the way. Now, I have tried to talk her into being on camera with me, but she won't. She's sitting right there on the couch. <laughs> so if I look over there, that's why. But let's break down this dress just like always. This has a lot of really long design elements. So I am not tall, as most of you know, and I look really super tall in this because it goes all the way from high up on the neck to a low point at the fringe, and those two distances are further accented by this very long, steep, narrow V. So if you wish to look thinner or taller, this is a great combination of design elements for sure. Fringe is always fun because it's lightweight, it's economical, it's durable, it's safe to wear for all types of dance and skate, and it really moves a whole lot. So if you are, I mean, for skating that doesn't really matter because you're going so fast, but if you want more movement that is lightweight, fringe is a really great way to do that. The side of this dress is, the angle is pretty darn cool because it goes high up and then low at the front, again, creating a long line. And she created an accidental long line <laughs> with the velvet. So let's talk about velvet because I've actually not talked about that in any of the other blogs. Velvet has what we call a nap. And the nap, as you can see, really changes the look of the fabric and how do you decide which way you want to make your velvet, because there is no wrong way, but generally you want it to go the same way. And in this case, Tammy said, when I said, you've made no mistakes on any of these dresses, they are so professionally made, they're fabulous, what happened here? This, why was this, you know, this way? And she says, well, I didn't have enough fabric. <laughs> So this is how I could make the dress with the fabric that I had. Okay, so let me talk to you about how to make it intentional versus intentionally accidental. So with velvet, with my nap, if I rub my hand down on this shiny part of the velvet, the fabric is very smooth and slick. If I run my hands down on the darker side of the velvet, it's rough. Typically, when I like to cut a stretch velvet dress, I like to do it rough down because I want the depth that velvet offers. Now, all velvets, which we were all discussing earlier today, velvets are so different because they all are slightly um, different thicknesses. This is a very lightweight velvet. You can see the color change here again. And so the, um, because of that, the shine difference is also pretty tremendous, whereas sometimes thicker velvets, there is not such a difference between the matte and the shiny side. So take your pick, and how do you know? You just hang it up on the wall or on a dress form or drape the fabric around yourself or your client and take photos, and that way you can step back and look at it and decide whether you want it to go rough down or smooth down. But one final design thing here is let's talk about how to make this intentional. So 
if you have a straight waist and or wide hips and you want to look more narrow, you could take and do the center front being shiny and take the dark way of the velvet and actually make it cut in and then go back out. Now sometimes you'll see evening gowns that do this. Why not turn it into your dancer skate dress? It's probably going to look better with a longer skirt versus a very short little skirt, but if you're an ice dancer, knee length is great. If you're doing ballroom, country, anything where you can have a longer skirt, that effect would totally work and give you a nice slim waist while still having a fun effect with the um, two shades of velvet. So anyway, this has a really awesome back, lovely bracelets. This is one of her earlier dresses. I think she still did a beautiful job with it, even though she says, oh no, it's terrible. I, it's really not. It's gorgeous. I am very happy to say it is for sale. I think it's beautifully done. So thanks to Tammy for letting me try on all of her dresses. And thanks to you all for joining me. If you have liked today's video, please tell all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends. Go to SewLikeAPro.com, leave me your name and email address. I'll sign you up for the newsletter and make sure that you know when sewing school is open for enrollment. Lastly, leave a comment. What is your favorite part of this dress? Do you like the high collar, the dramatic V with the mesh insert, wide open back, or a really fun fringe skirt? So that is it for me. I will talk to you again another day. Thanks so much.